The hell is it? <laughs> Welcome to UDK tutorials. Finally. Uh, anyway. Welcome to UDK tutorials that I uh, promised to make that I have really never gotten around to. But you know, finally, I'm getting to it. So let's get onto the computer. I'm going to give you a short overview first. Overview first. Sorry, I can't talk. Uh, and then after the overview, we'll get right into UDK and I'll start showing you guys some uh, stuff that I learned and uh, all that great stuff. So, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, let's go to the computer now. Blip. Okay, now we're on the computer, and uh, I'm deciding to give you guys kind of a short uh, little introduction thing here that I want you guys to follow. So anyway, uh, I'm going to give you a little, little, little a brief explanation. That's what I'm going for, a brief explanation of why I'm doing this, and that is because uh, it was in January that I had promised to do these again because I had done some other UDK tutorials that I never got around to finishing because I my internet sucked at the time and I really wanted to just upload everything in 1080p so that you could actually see what I was doing uh, and all that great stuff. So anyway, that's why I'm coming back to these and I've uh, learned a little bit more and all that great stuff. So I thought I would impart some knowledge even though the Unreal Engine 4 is coming out. It does not matter though because the interfaces are probably going to be somewhat similar so anything you learn here will still be able to transfer over and much like anything you learn in UDK will also be applicable in any other kind of gaming engine uh, so you can learn all that stuff here. So anyway, we're going to start off with a brief explanation of the UDK the UDK, uh, the Unreal Development Kit. It's actually a, a tool set for the Unreal Engine 3, which is a very powerful engine that Epic Games released and actually made it free to the public uh, so that you can do your own stuff and have fun with it. Uh, uh, if, you, if you don't know what the Unreal Engine is, you've probably heard of some games that have been made with it because what, what you can do is you can pretty much, you don't have to worry about coding an engine from scratch, and a lot of developers are, and publishers are drawn to that uh, because all you really have to do is make your own assets and you know throw them in there and add a bit of extra coding, and you're pretty much good. Uh, but anyway, uh, are you kidding me, Steam? Why do you have to finish downloading right now? Uh, anyway, so let's go through just a few. Unreal Engine 1 was pretty old. As you can see, all the games dated here are in the, the late 90s and early 2000s. Uh, Deus Ex, if you remember that game, that was really old. Uh, um, Unreal Tournament, duh. The original Unreal Tournament and stuff. So that's all, I mean, I doubt anyone's heard of a lot of those games. But then Unreal Engine 2, you start seeing stuff a little more familiar. Bioshock. Bioshock 2, I guess, was in a very advanced build of Unreal Engine 2. And uh, another Deus Ex. Harry Potter and Prisoner of Azkaban. Killing Floor, that's a pretty big one that was in that. Um, where's another one? I know there's another one in here. I'm just seeing if I can find it. Uh, Postal Games. Red Orchestra. Shrek 2, there's a big game. Spider-Man 2. Uh, but a lot of the Tom Clancy's were built in that, too. Splinter Cells. Oh, yeah, like Splinter I forgot that was a pretty advanced build of it, too. Uh, they do a lot. Sometimes if they really like like Ubisoft or, yeah, I think it was Ubisoft. We'd ask the Ubisoft people what, how to say their name. And I can't remember, though. Anyway, uh, the, they like using stuff. And then, of course, the next section of Unreal Tournament games. And then you get to the Unreal Engine 3, which has built uh, just so many, you know, huge name titles nowadays. And, of course, 50 Cent Blood and Sand is probably the biggest of those. Um, let's see, that APB game was in there. Alice, Madness Returns, I think Sly played that. Army of Two, Bat the Batman games. Uh, Bioshock Infinite's going to be in Unreal Engine 3. Uh, Blacklight Retribution. Borderlands, yeah, Borderlands is another big one. Gears of War, obviously. Uh, let's see if I can see. I see, like, all the Gears of War games. Uh, Mass Effect, of course, another huge one. Those were all in the Unreal Engine. Uh, Unreal Engine 3. And, you know, just a few more. Yeah, I mean, there's so many, especially, uh, what are they called? Like, indie games. This is such a great engine to use. So there's so many of them, so that's that's the list for that. 
But yeah, anyways, that's that's the draw of the Unreal Engine is just the ability to create stuff without the massive amount of resources of a huge development team for coding an engine and stuff and such. Uh, so that's that's what it's for. It's for making games, but it is also great for making cinematics, which is what I like to do. I haven't done that in a while, but I need to, I really need to get back into it because you guys seem to enjoy that. Uh, so anyway, I'm making these video tutorials. And last time I kind of made them to cater more towards uh, machinima and, you know, cinematics and stuff, which I'm going to lean towards this time too, but not so much as last time. I'm actually going to just go into detail as much as I know about the engine and just little helpful tips and stuff. Uh, so it, this, I mean, it, these tutorials are not going to be perfect. I, I'm going to have been, I haven't been in the Unreal Engine for like a lot the few, last few months. So I may, because they release updates every single month, I may have to like double check some stuff and stop the recording because they've added so much stuff, especially support for mobile devices. They actually added new sections for just making uh, games on your like little iPod, iPhones and Androids and stuff. Uh, so that's one thing I won't be covering because I have no idea about that stuff. That's a whole new ball game. It's somewhat similar, but it goes into different kinds of shaders and stuff. Anyway, so these tutorials will not be perfect. Uh, please feel free to correct me if you do know better than me. I will be open to that because I do not know everything. Uh, if you have a question, feel free to ask. I will be more than open to any questions you guys have, and I will try my best, even though I know there's going to be a lot of them, to answer every single question I can in the comments. Uh, so be don't be afraid to ask a specific questions make sure it stays relevant to the video though like if it don't go ahead and ask like advanced questions for other videos i'll be doing like if i'm covering matinee in a video don't start asking about like s certain kismet questions or anim set editor questions uh which you guys probably have no idea what i'm talking about right now but that'll be it so i'm not going to do this scripted at all it'll be just kind of like a walkthrough thing that way it stays a little more entertaining and keeps you guys attention uh, hopefully we'll see about that. Uh, but anyway, so let's uh, let's get started. First of all, uh, I'm gonna have us. I'm gonna point you over here to these video tutorials. This is where I learned every almost everything. I did in fact get a book from these guys too. They're it's called 3D Buzz, and they're known for doing uh, a lot of tutorials with like Maya and 3ds Max and stuff and uh, ZBrush. But they're really great. This guy that's he did all these tutorials here. And they're, they're all really excellent. They're more geared towards making games. Uh, I'll just warn you about that. But it is really a good idea. And they're, they're for the outdated uh, interface and stuff. So it doesn't look anything like the new, un, the new UDK. But if you go in here, you can learn a lot of stuff. So uh, as you can see, here's the URL at the top. You just search UDN video tutorials. They'll come right up at the top. Uh, so these are tutorials for, you know, as you can see here, the user interface. That one, I don't know if you'd want to watch that because it's just such an old version of the engine. It's hard to come by. Uh, and then a very important one is, would be the, like the simple level uh, where he just builds a simple level. But we'll be doing that too. So I would recommend these if you want to go even more in depth into some stuff. And then hit their books. Uh, I should probably pull those up really quick. Amazon. Um... You can see all the Blu-rays I'm looking at. Uh, 3D Buzz UDK. Here we go. Mastering Unreal Technology. This is what it's called. I, I learned this. I read this one, Volume 1. It's actually really great. It's definitely worth the money if you want to get into this kind of thing. So I would suggest uh, checking it out. Uh, there's actually three versions. The first two are the ones that you're going to you're gonna want to read, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Uh, volume three is oh here we go here's all three of them right here. Uh, volume three is actually uh, a lot harder. Wait a second, what is that? That's not the same one. Anyway, volume one and volume two are the important ones. This third one is a little different, I guess. That's not the same. the The third one, volume three, they I don't know if they even have it out yet to be honest, but it's like a coding thing with Unreal Script. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that. But uh, that's that's that stuff. I always like to point them out because 3D Buzz is awesome. They do an uh, amazing job with tutorials that I could never do. Uh, so I'm just going to you know point that out to you guys. Anyway, let's get to it. So you're going to want to go to udk.com, click on the download the May beta, and they just go into a bunch of stuff with uh, – 
you know, what they've added, which is kind of minor since the last update. Anyway, you'll go to the top right and hit download and then come right here to the latest release. If you're for some reason having problems with it, I would suggest going back to older betas. Uh, they have all the previous versions here <clears throat> because for some reason, it might not have, you know, support for, you know, different video cards and stuff. Uh, but yeah, if you can, I suggest downloading the newest beta. Click on it, it'll download. You, you click on the installer, it installs it and all that stuff, and then you're good to go. And then after that, you open it up and you will have a screen like this. Now, for the first episode here, <clears throat> I'm just going to go over some very basic stuff uh, with controls and stuff. Um... And that will be just pretty much it. And then after that, I'll go into a very in-depth overview of every single UI thing we have here. So when you open it up, you're going to come to this, which is a welcome screen, which I usually uncheck. But for the sake of this, I downloaded a whole new one. None of my special assets are in here. I usually have Mass Effect and Gears and stuff. A whole bunch of other stuff I added in here. Uh, but this is just standard, just like you guys would have downloaded, so you guys don't get lost or anything. Uh, but anyway, so the welcome screen. Uh, this brings up, getting started will bring up documentation that will <clears throat> give you tons of access to pretty much everything. It's gotten so much better than when I started, because when I started, there was barely anything there they didn't have any documentation on face effects or anim set editors anything and it was just you just had to learn from scratch pretty much so it's great that they have the documentation i'll click on that quick <clears throat> and it's the udn epic games which is where i showed you the video tutorials but now they have so much stuff just telling you all about you know materials lighting shadows uh animations and level editing and all sorts of great stuff uh so it's a really great tool, and I highly suggest you like bookmark that or something uh, so that, okay, come on, pop back up. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Uh, so anyway, and then you have the video tutorials, which should, yep, it brings you to the, oh, look at that. It brings you right to the 3D Buzz video tutorials, which is, uh, that's a really great thing. So uh, if you don't want to have to go and do that link thing that I showed you, <clears throat> come on, UDK, what are you doing? What you? What's going on? Come on, buddy. There we go. <laughs> Must be when I click. And then, uh, of course, you got the forums and uh, discussions about UDK, the news, and then I guess they have a Facebook thing <clears throat> that you can uh, like or whatever. And then they have uh, these new editing things where you can build a new map or open an existing map. Uh, so this isn't necessary, of course, so you can uncheck it. I'll leave it up just, just because... Uh, because it's kind of helpful sometimes when you just click on new map because it brings up a little dialog box and <clears throat> it says, hey, do you want a map with afternoon lighting, morning lighting, night lighting, midday lighting, or a blank map, which I would always choose blank map because these presets are, they're not customized and stuff, which you could. It's just a bunch of preset lighting stuff, so it saves you some time if you're doing something quick. But I don't, I like doing the blank map. Um, so anyway, what you have here. I'll just close this down, is the content browser. Um, <clears throat> I'll explain, I'll go, this is gonna have its own little episode pretty much, uh, but I don't wanna confuse you guys too much right now. So I'll just uh, close this out and we'll go over that later. And then you have, of course, the editor, which is, you know, this huge viewport, which I, I usually keep it as one big viewport, but of course there are many customization ways that you can do this. And you can switch it to, uh, you know, like a four grid style. If they even let you do that anymore, they should. Viewport configuration, two by two split. There we go. Okay. So what, what this will do is it'll give you orthographic viewports and then the, the live view. And what these are is, uh, this is actually the way that the old UDK used to start out. And it would have, it would actually be like a blank map down here with the builder brush and then the top, uh, <clears throat> I mean side, you see side, front, and top. And what these give you is just like different views of the, of the scene. And then if you wanted to, you can uh, tear off floating copies. And Oh, well, I'll go into this later, but uh, that's just kind of explaining different viewpoints. Uh, I'll go over navigation really quick. Uh, the, pretty much all you need to know about navigation is that uh, with the right, uh, I mean, okay, so let's start with the mouse. With the mouse, you can do pretty much everything. If you right-click and hold down, you can look around. 
That's pretty much all you need for looking around. And then if you want to, you can click down the left button and slide your mouse around to move around like that. That's a little different style of driving. Um, and then you can, of course, double click both buttons to pan around like this. And so that's pretty much all you need as far as movement. Um, there are other ways, of course, if you are a gamer, which I am guessing pretty much all of you are. If you hold down right click, you can look around and use the WASD keys to met navigate, just like a game, except you're just holding down the right thing. Um, before, oh yeah, it looks like they fixed it now. You can still use the WASD keys without holding it down. Before, they do a t toggle static mesh on W, which, um, let's see if they have it on here. Might be here. Show static meshes where are they there they are alt w now yeah before it was just w so like so many people would like freak out because their map disappeared um because all the static meshes disappear like that they're like oh what just happened it's because they let go of the w i mean the right mouse button and then click w which would you know make them disappear or come back so uh they they obviously fixed that because too many people were obviously complaining about it um so yeah, that's pretty much the really basic overview of uh, you know the editor, uh, and we'll get into a lot of we'll move to the content browser and VI. Actually, we'll go to the UI next, so stay tuned for that. Um, so right now, before we go, if you do in fact have a a card that renders DirectX 11, I would s highly suggest going to File, going to Switch Renderer, and going to DirectX 11 which I'm going to do. Actually, you know what? Uh, no, I'm not going to. Uh, but if you do, I would suggest doing it because it just makes it look better in a couple different places. So I would suggest doing it. You don't have to, and it's not a requirement. I'm just saying if you can, it's better to do that because it has some uh, smoothing and some uh, temporal uh, anti-aliasing and stuff. I don't know. It just makes it look better. So if you can, do that, and then you'll restart the editor and come back. So I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you for watching the first episode of the UDK tutorial. I know I didn't do much, but I'm just getting you guys ready. And then the next few episodes, we'll go over the UI. Uh, I'm glad I have good internet now and a good computer. So everything is going to be in 1080p. So if you guys have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments and I will begin to answering them. <sighs> okay. My throat is getting really dry from talking a lot. Uh, hope you guys enjoy and yeah, questions and stuff. And then I'll uh, start covering stuff and we'll get to making stuff. Stuff, stuff, stuff. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's fantastic. So anyway, I'm excited. We'll see you guys in the next episode. <laughs>